Hello, Cyclocross friends, and welcome to Baltimore, Maryland for Charm City Cross. It is Sunday, October 13th, and we are looking at the men's elite race on this UCI C2 weekend in Baltimore. It's the 15th anniversary of Charm City Cross, and we're looking at hazy skies, overcast, cloudy about in the 70s, perfect day for racing. The course is setting up to be a fast tactical race, which means that we should have a lot of good racing, close pack racing, and excitement at the front, similar to what we had on Saturday in this race when it came right down to the wire with Curtis White and Kerry Werner sprinting it out and Werner taking the win by a hair. All right, here we are at our start and coming off the bend into the turn onto the grass. Leading the way, it's Lane Mara from Cannondale Cyclocross World. He's got his teammates, Curtis White, Stephen Hyde, right behind them, along with the rest of the field. Coming onto the first turns into the course proper, Mara still leads the way. Curtis White right there, Stephen Hyde behind him, Kerry Werner in line. Looks like Merv Davis there as well. Michael Owens, Ben Frederick also lined up in this early pack. And we're just going to rush through the first couple turns here. And look, we already got an attack coming up from Warner. Warner going to the front as we come to our biggest feature on this course. This is the Mansion Hill off camber. This thing is treacherous. Days of racing on it. It might be dry, but it doesn't mean it's any less slick. A lot of dabbing there. You've seen Mare go through. Hyde is sitting about fifth spot. A little farther back, Owen is up there as the low line is not as good. You get one pedal strike and you're going down. As we see right there, Travis Liverman, one of our favorites for this race, the guy that you would expect to see through up at the front, goes down on that off camber. Up front, we're starting to get a little separation from our leaders. This looks like it's Werner who made that early move and is taking the lead. And as they come by pit two, Werner is still leading with White, and Mare right there, Hyde in fourth place. And here we are, North America's biggest flyover. I think there's close to 40 steps on this thing. It's three tiers. It's over two stories high. And it is a challenge to get up there lap after lap. On the back side of our flyover now, as you see, Werner still leading the way. No real big moves off the front, even though there has been some separation. Looks like we got a group about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven off the front. Ben Frederick just coming up there as the rest of the field tries to make contact. But just like we saw in the day before, it seems like they're pushing it a little harder at the front. White now in front with uh, Werner in second, uh, Mare in third, and Hyde in fourth. And here we go into back onto the mansion side of the course. White leading the way. Lose, lost the pedal there, but was able to get it back. Come up there. We got Mare still sitting in third place. Great ride for him. He always rides well in Baltimore. At, at, talking about riding well in Baltimore, Curtis White has done well here. Kerry Werner has reigned supreme here one last year. Hyde had his first big win, first UCI win ever beating Jonathan Page, I think it was five, six years ago. Hyde sort of having his coming out party in Baltimore, now back here as the three-time national champion. As we make our way through our, these bends, these are some fast laps, so we'll see these sections over and over again. But White now leading the way. Werner in second, a little confusing with both of them in white jerseys. Werner is wearing the Parkway Trophy CX leaders jersey. So that's why he's also in the white jersey to go along with White's Pan Am American jersey. You can see Curtis White pushing the pace. He wants to be, there's a section right here that we're coming up to, these steps. It's very important. Watch Curtis White here as he rides these steps. He wants to be out front because he wants to ride them. The key here is all of the other leaders. You had Werner. You had Hyde. These were the guys that he was racing against yesterday. We're able to race them. And we're going to go back a in a little bit and look at what happened in yesterday's race and what also happened before this race. What that was was Curtis White learning, not learn. I mean learning, yes, learning how to ride those steps. He was more comfortable running. He's a super fast runner. If you ever seen Curtis White off the bike, you know that he can get to the front of anything just as fast as most people can ride it. But... In yesterday's race, as we see, oh, we see Lane Mare trying to make a little move, and that opened the door for Stephen Hyde. Stephen Hyde to come around and lead the way as we make it back up to the big mansion hill off camera section. So Hyde taking advantage, and Werner, Werner slipping down a little bit and slowing everybody else down. Slows up White behind him, Werner even with more trouble. Looks like another pedal strike on that big off camber. That allows 
uh, your national champion, Stephen Hyde, to get away and get a little bit of space, and he's going to leave out of the saddle. He's going to take advantage of that as he starts coming around these turns, making his way back towards the finish line early in our race deal, but this is something that we want to see from Stephen Hyde. He's been struggling this year. He's been having a little back and hip uh, injuries, uh, lingering injuries going on and soreness, uh, but it's really good to see him in the front. Although on that long stretch, they were able to close the gap up, but we know that Hyde is looking to be punchy. And the thing that Hyde has going in his favor right now is that he really can dictate. He can do whatever he wants because the only person he's truly worried about at this stage is Kerry Warner. Because in third place is Curtis White. In fourth place is Lane Mara. That's it. That means you have three Cannondale Cyclocross World Riders in the front of this race. And they're all really going to be ganging up on Kerry Werner. He's the only non-Cannondale guy. We're coming to the planks here. You can see it as we uh, pop into focus again. This is an opportunity here where, where White is able to get off his bike and, and dismount where the other three or at least the top two uh, riders are going to ride those planks. There's a really uh, tight turn after the planks. So there's not a lot of advantage to staying on your bike. I mean, if you got the skill, great. But it's not like some of these courses we see where if you stay on your bike, you're able to just explode after that second plank and get a huge lead on anybody who still has to remount. Here, it really, you have to put the brakes on right after the plank so there's no big advantage uh, to riding versus running. Hyde still in front, making these final turns towards our flyover once again. And we really have gotten down to this group of four. There's a little bit of separation. It looks like that might be Sam Knoll, Ben Frederick still uh, back there. Somebody else stuck in there. I'll get that name in a second. But we got Hyde coming up here, leading the way. Kerry Werner in second. Curtis White and now in third. And Lane Mayer. And as you can see, that gap is really starting to grow as we, we come into our hill section. These little off-cambers on this hill. This is a fun section. Got a good... Um, cheering section with a, a lot of good tunes being played out, out, out here at Druid Hill Park for, for this day from the, uh, I think that's Bicycle, uh, uh, Baltimore Bicycle Works, uh, some of their uh, team out there as they make it into the woods, this same group of four coming through. You can see some of our other racers making their way. There's to uh, Richard Sachs, I believe that's Ch Chabanov and Owen coming through there and up the hill again, Hyde putting in another move and Werner has to mark everything. Kerry Werner is going to have to mark every move in the early goings of here. And it looks like they're starting to drop Lane Mare off a little bit, although he's getting right back up onto that wheel. So still that group of four. And then we have uh, Noel, I think that's Alex Ryan. Noel, Alex Ryan, Ben Frederick chasing. Looks like Merv Davis is in that next group down also chasing as we see our top four together. So Mare able to, to gap, uh, close that gap and get back onto the wheel. This is, as I said, uh, when we first started, this is going to be a really tactical race. It was on Saturday, and it's not the kind of track that somebody can just get away and stay away in with these riders. We saw it earlier. Becca Farringer is able to do it. She really was the class of that field, was able to separate from the rest of the women's field and just sort of ride her own race away uh, from the pack. But I don't think that we're going to see this in here for two things. One, I don't think anybody wants to go all in and burn those matches in an hour-long race. Mm -hmm. And two, as I said, these these top riders, especially Hyde, White, and Werner, have raced against each other so many times that they don't want to make any mistakes early. They're going to wait and see what happens. Here we are to these steps again. Once again, your top three riders are all riding this along with Mare. Looks like... Uh, Sam Noel. Looks like our group is all back together. We got that second group that's coming up. So it looks like maybe they've taken a little bit off of the pace with Hyde out front. It'll be interesting to see if Warner uh, is happy to sit on that wheel or if at some point he's going to want to get ahead and get away from these guys or at least get rid of everyone else behind them. I mean, I'm sure he doesn't like three against one, but he'll take his chances. And here we go. Just as we said it, who is this? This is this is White. This is actually White making the move. Again, those jerseys look uh, familiar, but Curtis White Every one of these guys wants to be first when it comes to this feature because you don't want anybody behind in front of you to make a mistake. If you make a mistake, that's fine. You're slowing up everybody else. But once again, Werner having issues and opening up a little bit of a gap for White. Last time we saw this, he had the same issue, opened up a gap for Hyde. This time he's uh, he's uh, forwarding the favor to Curtis White. White able to 
make a little bit of ground, but Werner having none of it. Werner just marking every move and shutting it back down. Even when it's his own mistake, he's making up for it here and trying to get back on that wheel of Curtis White. Well, we've got a little second. I, I, I want to take this chance to just uh, go into this Werner versus White rivalry that, that we've seen grow up uh, over last year, but really over this year, started in go cross two races uh, head to head. And we saw Werner take one race and White take the, the Sunday race. So they split there. Um, and then coming even into yesterday, it came down to an inch, an inch between them at the finish line on the sprint. Uh, Werner able to take it from White. If you go to cross results and look at the head to head for these two riders, Curtis White has won 10 times when they've been in the same field. Kerry Werner has won 11 times. I mean, they're practically even 11 to 10 on there. So they know each other really well. And it just is a chess game when it comes to them too. And then they got the, the, uh, national champ who they're actually able to gap a little bit here we come through with six laps to go six laps to go for our two leaders and it looks like uh steven hyde is dropping off the pace just a tad lane mayor there as well and we were really just in that just in that one third lap that we saw when they're coming up the finishing stretch when they were going towards the mansion hill there was a, it came back to a group of six or seven so that was when hyde was in front and it seemed like the pace may have been a little slower that second group was able to come back but once white and once warner went back to the front the pace seems to, to get a little bit higher and they've definitely made it so this is now truly just a four-person group making their twists and turns around towards the pits again we got six laps to go six laps to go in this race Oh, nice little move there by Hyde. He's able to sneak by Warner. He wants to be behind White. This is where they can come into these team tactics a little more. When you have White out front and you have Hyde right behind him, if Hyde, Hyde can do he can play with Warner in those situations and allow his teammate to get a lead. And we're going to see if that's kind of what happened yesterday. We saw that in work. Hyde wasn't feeling it. He was trying to drop the pace, and he was able to get in front of Warner, open up that gap a little bit for White, and then finally Warner had to go around, close it down, and those two were racing on their own. Like, it's going to be interesting to see if we see something similar here as you can already tell that White's got, it's even a couple bike lanes, but White's just off the front a little bit with Hyde in second, Werner right on his wheel as we go through this one tree section and then we're going to come up to the high, the uh, long sprint up the hill. This is a good opportunity. Now, I, I want to go back to yesterday and at the end of the race yesterday, we were talking about how White was running the stair section and Werner was riding and how that was an advantage for, for Kerry Werner. And you can see it here in this clip. You can see in this, this is the last time up the steps yesterday and you can see how white is giving it his all to try to beat werner up the steps try to get to that final pin on that right hand left hand turn and he isn't able to do it and what that meant was that he was down behind there and he really i believe thinks that that cost him the race why i'm, I'm able to guess that is that he came out this morning and was putting in all of this extra time to practice that section. And here we are as we see him go up, riding smoothly up here. Here he is, Curtis White, able to get this. This is a skill that he had, but in this certain situation, he did not have that skill yesterday or he did not feel comfortable with it. Came out this morning. We're going to look at these clips. Here he is just checking out the course, looking at what's going on, looking at that section, looking at that feature, seeing if he's able to ride it. He tried it two, three times, a little squirrely at first, but here it is on the last attempt, and you can see he's nailing it. So this is a skill just learned this morning, able to use it, able to not have to put in that extra effort by getting off the bike and also a little faster to be able to stay on your bike and ride up the stairs versus having to run them like he did yesterday. And the result is he's out front right now in this group of three. Lane Mare has dropped off the pace a little bit. 
We're going to watch how everybody handles this. Werner dropping down a little bit high, actually trying to possibly go by him, get back in front on the off camera. That's a dicey place to try to attempt to pass. Come down here, tripod around there for Curtis White. Werner right there on his wheel. Hyde's going to be able to close that gap as well. And this is a section that White has excelled with. You know, he's a guy that's got a ton of power. And if he wants to, this long stretch back up to uh, the finishing stretch is uh, one that he can take advantage of. It's really two. It's the approach to the mansion and then the approach away from the mansion. Those are the two really long stretches on this track that I think are, are, are places where Curtis White can take advantage of and that Kerry Werner really has to just hang on. Werner really good through these turns, really smooth, very efficient. I think that's where he saves a lot of time, makes up a lot of time, is able to close down that gap once again, get a couple breaths as he just lets White do the work in front of him and it just stays on this wheel. We make this right-hand turn, and this is an uphill finish at Charm City. Uphill finish, so it really means that where we're seeing the riders right here as they make this right turn back onto the tarmac, that's a good look at what we're what you'll see at the end of races. When they're going all out, when they make that first turn, it's uphill, and it's not so long that you can really get around. A lot of times at Charm City, historically... We have not seen passes on that finishing stretch, on that uphill stretch. It seems like the first one to the tarmac usually is able to win the race. I know there have been exceptions. We've seen some really uh, good sprints at this race year after year. This is one, if you ever want to go see a race live, this is the one to see because you're going to see sprint finishes. You don't see that everywhere in cyclocross. Baltimore, that's where you see it. All right, we are coming down here, and we have white out in front. Werner, second place. Hyde still in third place. This group of three, Lane Mara, just a couple bike lengths off, but still kind of in the picture, although he's dropped off a little bit more. Then we're coming to pit two. And they're about to head back over to the flyover sections. Oh, little hand up by Curtis White. Believe he's going to be coming in for a bike. Something going on there with White. He's going to need to take a bike. That means that Werner's able to go in there in a high, taking advantage of that situation and making the pass right at the last second. So he completely flipped around right at the pits where he would have had Hyde was in third place. White goes in, takes a bike. Hyde takes advantage of that situation, makes the pass on Werner, and is the first one up the steps as they... Head through this section. Nice little view of the top of the flyover. This Wagner roofing uh, flyover, which was just amazing. And scaffolding resources. Another company working with Charm City sponsoring this race. You know, go out there. Find these non-endemic sponsors and you might get an enormous flyover like that. It's a good lesson for race organizers just to think out of the box. Uh, another thing that was great about having a Wagner there Wagner be part of this race was we got these great photo stands where this uh video is being taken of from here is all up on these scaffolding stands which was just amazing to have at this level of race it really made it uh, the opportunity possible uh to to do the filming that we're doing so we're seeing these pictures from those those uh scaffolding risers that that were built just for this race all right Stephen Hyde still out there. Kerry Werner second. Curtis White. We see uh, some of our chasers. Looks like Ben Frederick putting in a good effort. Sam Knoll right there. Alex Ryan as well. Trent Blackburn also there. And I believe that was Merv Davis on the end of that train for your chasers. Coming up through these bends. Hyde still up there. The other two right on his wheel looking around, taking stock of what he's got. Ever since getting hurt last year, it's been a really long year of recovery for Stephen Hyde to get to that form. He won the national championship, you know, in in Louisville in the mud against Curtis White, and I, I that was just done on grit. I don't think he was 100% healthy then. I think he would say the same, and still just still slowly trying to make his way back. You know, he's a guy who's very meticulous, probably looking more towards the end of the season right now. But he wants to be able to test himself. He wants to put in these big efforts and see where he's at, especially with these two riders in the U.S. Right now, we got Werner and we got White. You know, it has to be said that there are two other riders, really, who have been competing in all of these races uh, that are not here. This is our first split weekend of the calendar in North America. So U.S. Open, a cyclocross going on. 
in Colorado this weekend as well. That means that Gage Hecht is there and Lance Haydits there. Eric Bruner, a guy who we haven't seen a lot of, is also there. Uh, so so the, the talent in the men's field has been split. And look at this. Uh, we have another move here. Hyde is dropping back. Werner is now going to lead. You know, if we look at the last couple laps, oh, Hyde actually dropping off about three or four bike lanes just in that last couple seconds. Werner's been the one who's probably had the hardest time with this off camber section. So having him out front, I don't know. He's got a really clean ride that that time through. Maybe he just needed to be out front to ride that cleanly, but that was a good time through the off camber section for Werner. Was able to get there, not really make up any space on Curtis White, who's still on his wheel, but it looks like Stephen Hyde is starting to drop off the pace a little bit. We saw this in yesterday's race, too, where it just came down to White and Werner, and I'm just wondering if this is going to be a repeat of what we saw there. Curry Werner with a little look back. He wants to know exactly where Stephen Hyde is. He, he is, again, Werner has a lot of thinking to do. The tactics are really on him. The, the, the tactics for White and for Hyde are much easier. They got two people. They can send somebody. They can attack. They can do whatever they want against Werner and try to work him over. Werner has to play defense and be aggressive at the same time, which is is, is not an easy, easy feat to pull off. But right now he's doing a good job. Probably feels more comfortable just dictating the pace and going from the front. As they hit the last couple turns, these little chicanes, these really tough little turns right before the finish. So you're not going to come into the finish with a ton of speed until you hit that tarmac and that incline, and then it's really just gun it from there. Werner with another couple look backs to see what's going on. He sees White there, and we got four laps to go. Four laps to go in this one. Our group of three, and right, a little pass, uh, White at the end of the start is able to pass by, so he now is going to take over, take some of the pace. Werner's not happy with that. Looks like he's trying to make that pass back around as they come towards, and he does, and they are going back and forth. So we came into the, to the start. It was Werner in the lead. You got underneath the finishing truss. White makes the pass. You get back to the plant, planks and says, no, sir, Werner, he wants to be out there in front, and he is once again leading this race as they make their way to pit two. Be interesting to see. I mean, if this was a muddy race, we'd be watching Curtis White to see maybe if he changed bikes back again to his A bike. In this fast and dry race, I'm, I'm going to bet that unless he has another mechanical, he's just going to be staying on bike number two for the rest of this race. So we switch cameras and start looking towards the flyover they, as they come through. Werner still dictating this race on the front. Every time Hyde or White has tried to make a move, has tried to go to the front, Werner shuts it down. He wants to be in front. Up to the flyover, we see that uh, Lane Mayer still there, still just about um, you know, uh, 10, 15 seconds back, but solely in fourth. Lane's just sort of racing on his own for now. Making it through these bends on the top of the hill. Good look at the venue. Good look at all of the uh, team tents that were set up for this nice exhibition uh, area at Charm City. Again, this is this is a, a, a race that's built in this bowl. It's this beautiful layout. It's uh you know last year and years past we've had a sand section and we've we've had the, had that mud section last year and all of that was taken out this year. The Park Service really didn't want the race over in that sort of. Uh, older growth tree area so we were more into the field this year I, I know people were hesitant to they they really wanted to see what that looked like once it happened and if it really changed the dynamic of the race but it turns out i think everybody who races loved the new track it's always going to have it's not just you know it's not a state it's not a, a a tape farm as people call it you know there you can see it here this has a very european style to it there's a lot of flow to the course and from the camera, it looks like it's flattened out, but these are like undulating hills. So you, there is no place really to recover on this entire course. It is just elevation the whole way, these rolling hills. It's nicely groomed so you can get a lot of speed, but you're never recovering. Thank you. 
So unless you want to fall behind, you got to be full gas the whole time. And talking about falling behind, it looks like, again, Stephen Hyde just dangling off the back of this leading two. Kerry Warner putting in another dig. You can see him getting out of his saddle and just putting in these few hard efforts and then going back to his really high tempo. Curtis White able to mark him, able to get on that wheel as we come to one of our other climbs here. There's about four or five climbs, and then we're coming up towards our step section. Again, as I've said over and over, this was the difference maker in Saturday's race. Curtis White came out, made the adjustments he had to make. Kerry Warner still faster up there. You know, he is still better at that. He's always ridden it. It wasn't something he had to learn. That's the kind of thing that, that Werner just excels at and he loves. So he was definitely faster up there, but White, A, saving some energy, and B, not having to remount. So it's it, he is definitely saving some matches by staying on his bike and doing, doing it in that section that he wasn't too, able to in uh, yesterday's race. This is a point where we've seen a pass coming up towards the off-camber section every lap. It looks like Warner's able to go in here again and see get a clean look at the off-camber section. Uh, he was having issues with it earlier, last two times through here. Really clean ride for Werner. He's going to drop down. Here's one of these <laughs> places where you really can't get a good um, feeling of how steep that is. If you were to just stand up there and reach out, you could really touch that uh it's almost it's like a velodrome over on that section it is so steep and it's so blown out now that just just staying upright on that off camber is not always easy all right here we go look at this we got Hyde making his way back up here trying to make that pass oh man elbow to elbow shoulder to shoulder as they come around the turn Hyde, I don't know. He may have been tired, may have been a little stiff, but he's definitely loosened up right back into this one, right back onto these wheels. That's the confidence of a three-time national champion to be able to come back into the race. You can see him actually stretching out his back there. I'm wondering if he is possibly having some, some pain that's uh, inhibiting his, his racing now, but not at the moment as he's able to work his way back into the mix with the uh, White and Werner. Three laps to go, three laps to go, and another attack here. Man, I'll tell you, Curtis White, every time he comes to the top of that hill, he just goes. If you want to write the book on Curtis White at Charm City, it's top of the hill, watch out, because he's going to attack. And that's what he's done the last two or three times. Werner was able to pass him back the last lap. This time, White is able to stay on the front, puts his head down, puts in a big dig, as they're going to make their way back towards pit two. Every time White has one of these long stretches, he just takes advantage and just goes all in and digs it out, makes everybody else hurt. These are just lots of... I mean, this is cross at its best. It's just effort after effort after effort. Just a lot of punchy attacks coming by pit two. And it looks like uh, White this time will be able to take the group into the flyover, into our Wagner roofing and scaffolding resources flyover. White with a nice, again, white off the bike is going to be faster than these other two. Shows, shows it to you right there in that section as we make it back up to our hills after the flyover. Oh, we got the wave going on. They're going to turn it around and do it again. Baltimore coming out for this race. You know, it's, it's one of these things. It's a big course. We got fans all over the place, good spectators out there. There's not one section that everybody congregates to, so you're not getting four or five deep on the tape. But it, it, throughout the whole race, we definitely had a lot of people out enjoying this race and enjoying this one as Curtis White making his attack. And Werner, a smart move by Werner. He knows he has to get on the other side of Hyde. Every time that White attacks, it, Hyde ne isn't necessarily going to follow full bore. So Werner caught behind Hyde, had to make that move around Hyde to go and try to track down Curtis White, who is definitely off and running now. We were talking about attack after attack. Just every turn, they're just pedaling, going full gas out of every turn. And look at that. Kerry Werner, a lot of power of his own, able to close the gap a little bit, still has some work to do to get to White. 
And by doing so, you can see that, again, uh, St uh, Stephen Hyde is starting to drop off a little bit. And there we saw a, a bigger gap opening up to Hyde. By the time we get around to this other side here, we see pick up our riders again. And we can see that Kerry Werner has made contact. So we got White and Werner underneath the flyover. Now about three or four lengths back is Hyde. We're going to come back to our st our stair section one more time. White leading the way. Werner on his wheel. This is where it gets really tactical. This is where you can expect to start to see these attacks. This next little section, after they get to the top of these stairs and they make the left turn. Oh, big look there from Curtis White. He's checking out where, where Werner. Look at that. I was just about to say this is the place where they start to attack. Curtis White does the exact opposite and sits up, waits for his teammate to get back onto his wheel and close it down. And now we just have all three back together. White leading the way. Kerry Warner in second. And that gave the opportunity for Stephen Hyde to easily close that back and get into it. And once he got everybody together, Curtis White goes again. White off the off from the front, making another attack into this off camber section. He's able to get a couple bike lengths on Warner, who again isn't able to start yet. And look at this Hyde, Hyde, Hyde having issues. Hyde going down. Hyde going down on the off camber section. As we said, that is a super slick section. And if you push it too hard, you're going down. And a huge gap opening. Huge gap opening between your leader. Curtis White, Kerry Warner in second. Warner takes a big look over his left shoulder to see just what the damage is, what happened to Stephen Hyde, and he sees that the gap is open, and this may be it. They're going to be coming up on two laps to go, and that may be the difference between a three-man race and a two-man race as Hyde falling farther back. I don't know if that's something that he can make up with that gap so far. Two laps to go. Two laps to go for our leaders, Werner and White. And it looks like Kerry Werner on that back stretch was able, on the finishing stretch, was able to go back into the front. And he is going to just gun it now because the last thing he wants is for Stephen Hyde to make his way back into this race. And I'm sure he's feeling a little more comfortable even there. Another look over his left shoulder. Saw Hyde was coming up. I'll get him until... Going by pit one. We're going to see them on the flyover again. You can see just what the gap is between White, Werner, and Hyde. And this is the opportunity here. Again, last lap what we saw was Curtis White waiting, waiting for Stephen Hyde to make his way back. So they had two against one. As long as Werner is in front and pushing that pace, White isn't able to do that. So this, this is a great opportunity tactically for Werner to take the lead and really try to distance himself from Stephen Hyde. And at the same time, try to protect his lead and, and his tactical tactical uh, uh, advantage with just white up there so two-man race about a lap and a half left to go as they make their way through the trees up the hill Kerry Warner out of the saddle out of the saddle and pushing this is the first time we've really seen him put a big effort in on this climb as they make their way back to the farthest point of this course white is able to mark that effort get right on this wheel and I really think that we are going to be coming down to a two-person race. Werner and White. Little off the gas there from Werner as he comes through here. And this is where I think they're really going to start looking at each other. It all comes down to if Werner thinks he's comfortable enough with this lead that he can again start thinking out the next move in the chess game with Curtis White without Stephen Hyde, who we just saw go through our picture, catching back up. That's the last thing that he wants, is Hyde to be back in this race. Werner coming around the far turn in there. They're about to go underneath the flyover to our stair section for the penultimate time. We got about a lap and a half left in this race. This is a carbon copy of what we saw yesterday. The one biggest difference between yesterday's race 
And today's race is the section that we're coming up here that I know I have hammered to death so far, but it is these steps. White's ability now to stay with Werner, to ride the steps with Werner, is huge. That, that really is a game changer in this one. That was where he was having to burn a match every lap yesterday. Does not have to do it now. And this is, we got to be on the lookout here because this, again, we talked about after the finish, there was a place where White likes to attack. This is a place yesterday he tried to make a winning move, tried to get around Werner. It just didn't work out for him. And look at Kerry Werner. One, two, three looks. He knows. He remembers yesterday. He knows exactly what happened. He knew that this is where Curtis White wants to go. This is where he wants to attack, and he is just turning every time he gets a chance. There, again, another little look. He's making sure that if White goes, he's able to match that effort and stay out in front. Werner's race changed when he went out front on this off-camber section. He was a little, a little sketchier when he was behind. Once he went to the front, completely different rider through there, riding it smooth once again. Right foot out of the pedal, tripoding through there, a little dab through the corner. And we haven't even seen Hyde up on that off-camber section yet, so I don't think that Stephen Hyde will be coming back in this race. This is now down to Werner and White. Werner able to dictate from the front. This is not a, a track where you really going to get any benefit from drafting through there. I think Harry Warner wants to be the guy who makes all the decisions in this race and forces Curtis White to react. This is kind of the practice round here for these guys. This is the final few turns. When they do this again, everything is going to be on the line because they're going to be doing it for the win. Last couple turns of this. This is where the tension starts to get high. This is coming down. They they already had a round of this yesterday. They did the exact same thing. I could play you the video from yesterday's race. It's going to look just like this at this point as they were sprinting for home. And here it comes. They're going to come up to the top, and they are going to see one lap to go. Let's see if we see if Curtis White, again, we talked about this is where he likes to make his move right here. Is he going to do it again when they pop through these trees with one lap to go. Are we going to see White? And we do. There it is. Once again, every time he comes through there, Curtis White wants to go to the front, and it is no different on this lap. Curtis White now leading this race as they make it to the planks. He will dismount. Werner will stay on his bike. As we talked about before, not that big of an advantage. As you can see, Curtis White is able to easily get back on his bike and keep that advantage over Werner. And as we come down to it, anybody's guess. You know, I, I talked about throughout this how Werner wanted to be in front to be able to see when to to gauge those attacks and react when they happen from White. He was more comfortable there, but he's not in that spot now. Now he is trailing, and White is the one who is dictating the pace. He's already he attacked to get out there in front. I don't even know if we want to call it attack. Just changed his tempo. Was able to make that pass as they go through the pit for the final time through that pit one coming up to the flyover you know i think i called that pit two last time one of the pits that's the last time they're going to pass through that one coming to the flying fly over for the final time warner using those fast feet to make it to the top um, excuse me white in the front warner right on his wheel no separation last time through our bbw fan section there they are we're going to make these turns still on the wheel. We can't even see Hyde coming down to fly over yet. They have picked up the pace on this final lap. They are going all in. We are about a half a lap away from the end of this as we see Hyde just making his way down the flyover. I'm sure Lane Mara is going to be not too far behind on, on is still sitting in fourth place. But we're more concerned about first and second. First and second place up, out of the saddle. Here he is, Curtis White making his move, coming up that hill. Werner out of the saddle too, having to match this. He cannot let any space. There's going to be no space between him and White from here until the finish. Lose that wheel, and this race is over. Coming up to these, this final time through the farthest reaches of our course as they will loop back 
behind the flyover one more time and hit the stair section. This is that this last lap respite. White is taking a little bit off the gas. He's sitting down. It's a comfortable tempo. It's still high. It's still fast, but there's no attacks just through this section. This is kind of this little calm before the storm. They're just marking each other. They, he tried to attack earlier up that hill. Werner was able to match it. Looks back, still doing these little checks. And here we are. They are through the flyover, heading toward the stairs for the final time. This is going to be a rematch of what we had yesterday. Yesterday, this is where Kerry Werner was able to gain an advantage over White today. Here we go, Werner. He's going to try to make the pass on the steps. He is looking to make this pass on the steps, seeing if he can get around, and he does. There you go. Still an advantage for Werner. Not as big as yesterday, but Werner able to use the steps, able to use riding the steps to get out in the front, and he is now in the driver's seat as we come down to this final long stretch, and it looks like they're soft pedaling. This is where this is like the, the wait before the sprint. Nobody wants to lead out of the sprint, but we know that Curtis White wants to attack. He always attacks here. Is this going to be any different? It looks like he's getting out of the saddle, but also Werner is. Werner is almost attacking just to keep White from attacking. He keeps the tempo high and he's able to hold off White making the pass. He's able to go into the off camber first and that's a huge advantage for Werner as he goes through the off camber the, for the first time a little bit of an issue but able to keep it steady and keep that lead and that is a huge move for Kerry Werner to hold off any attacks going into that off camber section he is now in the driver's seat he just has to hang on until that final turn if he can make it to that tarmac first this race is going to be his and you know who knows that Curtis White and he's going to do everything he can, everything he can to make this pass in these final turns. Here we go. We're coming to this little tricky off camber for the last time. This is where Hyde tried to make a pass earlier on. Really dicey section. Now, oh, foot down, foot down for Warner, but he's able to save it and make the turn into the final chicanes of this with Warner. He might have gone through the most dangerous part. He, this is Werner's race right now, coming through to the final turns. He is in the lead. White has to do everything in there. White trying to look for that left side, and there he goes. There he goes. Curtis White coming in on the inside. He's able to make the pass on Werner. That is huge. That is a huge move right there from Curtis White to get around. Oh, Werner. Werner trying to get it back. He's going on the outside. That's a tough place to try to get it. He's not able to make it. Werner is dropping back into second place. Curtis White leading the way up this final turn. He was able to make the pass. Coming up home, and this is going to be Curtis White taking the win. Charm City, day two, 2019, on the line with that late surge, the late move, and that was the winning move for Curtis White. He's coming in second. Coming up here in third is your national champion. That is Stephen Hyde, and right on his wheel, great ride by Lane Mayer, Cannondale Cyclocross World Devo Team rider. What a great day at Charm City. Thank you all for tuning in. This is Bill Scheichen for the Wide Angle Podium and CX Hairs. Check out the CX Heat Check. This is going to have a lot of ramifications on what happens in next week's CX Heat Check along with the race that's going on in Colorado. Check out all our highlights from this weekend. Subscribe to youtube.com slash CX Hairs. Check us out on Twitter at CX Hairs. If you got a question, comment, want to tell us what we did wrong, feedback at CXHairs.com. Catch you next time, Cyclocross friends.
Michigan. There we go, Mike! Lost in our good zone again. Come on, let's ride up the stairs. Let's do it. Only a few minutes left before we know who's going to go. Alex Donahue, Justin Keaton.